and of history, Harappan constellation, then you have uh, Madhyadesha constellation, then you have Sangam constellation and Dakshinapata constellation. In the Dakshinapata, we locate Karnataka, Telangana, Andhra, and Sangam, you have Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Now, there are very powerful cultural routes that actually routes and routes, they take, take uh, cultures across India to, to the larger world. One is the Silk Route, which takes, which moves across Brahmaputra and Gandhara constellations. Now, Gandhara constellation connects us to Central Asia, to Iran, to almost up to Arabia. And the Southern uh, Spice Route, which takes us from, from, from uh, Sangam and then Kerala, it takes us on, on one side to Malaysia, to Indonesia and various other places, and towards the western side up to Rome. Okay, Roman, uh, uh, you know, uh, ministers used to complain that the spices of Kerala are depleting our khajana. You know, there is a there is a complaint about it that you will come across. So, spice route and, and the silk route, these are the routes which actually generate a new cultures, brought in cultural flows. Now, what's important is that this is an axiom on the basis of which we continue to work. Cultural flows and territorial boundaries are not isomorphic in relationship. That is, your culture does not stop with territory. Your notion of territory is a very recent one. The concept of nation-state territory is a very recent one. It has nothing to do with the cultural flows. The Langas of Jaisalmar, Rajasthan, the Langas of Jaisalmar casually walk across the border and then celebrate festivals and then uh, uh, functions in Pakistan. The Langas are extraordinary singing communities. They just move across Jaisalmar uh, and then go to uh, Pakistan and then they, they continue to sing there. Okay? So cultural flows and territorial borders are not isomorphic in relationship. No jati has been able to generate the concept of nation, let alone nationalism. No jati can ever generate that because the, the, the concept of the jati vinyl needs to be redefined because jatis are self internally self-dividing biocultural formations. They cannot be unified. They cannot be brought into a single umbrella. It's extraordinarily dif difficult. But they generated cultural forms that are shared by the jatis. Okay? There's a very fascinating thing that goes on. So how to map this extraordinary thing is the challenge. And then we're trying to do that. Oops. Well, what do you do with what you have to talk about? <laughs> the concept note actually is one page. I said I'll switch off the mic uh, in the beginning. Now it's better. The, the, the concept note actually tries to def describe this entire project in just one page. And the designing of the concept note, the designing of the project, the designing of the website are challenges for students. How to design this? How to, how to conceive? How to visualize a concept? If there is a concept, how to visualize that? How to bring together extraordinary amount of varied heterogeneous information together concisely but in a visual with a visual appeal. How do you do that? These are bigger challenges that are available to us now. Okay? And this particular student, this is one of the semester's projects, one student, I'm not sure if he is here. He ran away. Okay. So uh, this has been done by one of our students here and he's still doing his PhD. And there are other students have done, uh, they all know the kind of work that is going on here. This deals with Sangam, uh, that is uh, um, Tamil Nadu and Kerala areas. What are the kind of jatis, what kind of cultures that they have generated and give the samples about them, but write about them, write critically about them and the layers and layers of uh, critical reflection on what is conceived uh, can also be added to the project that is going on here. One important thing I want to point out, we are generating researchers. These scholars will continue to work through inscriptional technologies, many of us. But we, there is something else that needs to be recognized. These inscriptions, whatever we generate through the PhD thesis, are not going to be helpful to the communities that are continuing to practice. My students' PhD thesis on show dance is not going to help the show dance performers. Okay? It will get him a PhD and a job. That's a necessary thing. Everybody will have to get, it, to get a job. But what's important is that we need to recognize something else. And something else is that these cultures have sustained their cultural forms by means of what I call not the surrogate bodies called the archives, but what I call this lively archives. A lively archive is a different thing from archive. The archive is where your memory is externalized, retained in an external body, which is a notebook, 
and kept in an external institutional structure. Whereas the library archives retains the memory in the pores of the body itself. It is there in your body. You can't open the brain and sign, look for some, some kind of data files. You won't find anything. Okay? So library archives are the archives with which the community continues to live and transmit these archives generationally, impart generationally to the, to the members of the community or other members. So the library archives need to be sustained. So increasingly what needs to be recognized, the Jati cultural composition of the class needs to be recognized. If there are communities and members of those communities who have contributed to the cultural forms of the specific communities, we need to pay extraordinary attention to those, those students also. We need to learn to pay attention to those students because that creative aspect must be sustained. That any amount of uh, my teaching may not be helpful, but we need to provide a space so that they are in a position to reflect and continue to sustain the lively archives. The generational imparting, generational transmission of modes of learning and forms of learning must be continued. So the, the special tasks that cultures that have faced colonialism, the cultures, the, the tasks that the cultures have is that how to sustain these lively archives. I bet such our lively archival, archival communities are there in all the countries. The map will enable, hopefully at some point, uh, the map will connect these various communities also. That's the largest, the bigger ambition where everybody will contribute. I had a, I had a student, a master's student uh, from Afghanistan. When we talked in an initial stage about this kind of project, he was so excited, he collected a whole range of songs from his daddy community and then brought them, put them together. I have all the files. Central Asian students, we work with Yemeni and Central Asian students here on a different project and the project is still 10 years ago we have done it. That's, the, that's one of the best projects that master MA level students have done in this university. At some point, we'll, we'll, if you are interested, I'll show this project to you. And many people are interested elsewhere about this particular project. Because we connected to these various students and their cultures on the basis of Silk Road. For example, when I talk about Panchatantra, many Indian students would respond. But when I talk about Kaila or Dimna or um, uh, various other names, Nusrullah, Anwar-e Suheli, okay, Iyare Danish, these are all the Persian and Arabic names. The students immediately reacted to them and then they began to work on them. One student spent a lot of money from, from Iran, got new books from, from uh, uh, Iran and then tried to work on that. That work has been done 10, 12 years ago. That work is available. Visually, they conceive something. This is the more sophisticated one, but that work is, is still one of the best researchers on Panchatantra, and that work is still going on. Another student has just finished a PhD thesis on Panchatantra, and the website is available for somebody to see. I'll, I'll take it just a few minutes. Um, yeah. Yeah, I still have time. I don't, I don't want to miss the questions if there are any. I'll just show you the taste of this. This is the first page. This gives you the this gives you the entire project in one page. Concise way, communicating to people who are not familiar with this, that needs to be done. These are all hyperlinked, as you can see. These are all hyperlinked. New words, new language. New way of conceptualizing are, the, are, are required here in this kind of work. There is nothing available out there on which you can draw. So, for example, there are Ramayana has been has moved across various kind of communities. So here you will have examples of Ramayana, brief description about that. And maybe a YouTube material can be added to that. Uh, if you have any internet connection, we don't have here. But um, uh, these are all hyperlinks. How those of you who come from those places will immediately recognize them. <coughs> Again, internet connection is not there. So what happened to these communities is that this is just a sample I have shown. Uh, so. Uh, material in very different kind of forms, plastic forms, uh, visual forms, art forms, or verbal forms can be brought together. If we are, if we are, our ambition is to develop a project on the Mahabharata at some point across all the communities, okay? and then develop a massive database and uh, visualize that, and students are working on this in various ways at this university. Now, 
what's important is that the university, the, the, these communities did not require the university at one point. These communities sustained themselves because they were patrons from the community itself. There's a strange intricate relationship among the subtle relationship among these cultural, cultural communities and cultural formations, biocultural formations. I can talk more about this, but there's no time. Okay. But today, in the post-independence period, that has disappeared. Now what is required is that to rejuvenate humanities, to reorient humanities, we need to ask for the study of humanities in every institution, which is important. But if a small place has humanities program, a small engineering college, and that area will have multiple of these communities, there must be a way in which the connection between the communities and the academic institutions must be generated. And the idea is shown visually here. I hope it has that. Yeah. So this just gives a sample of academic institutions that are located in those places, but the communities are also the Janjati communities that are there in these places. Okay? There must be a way where when you go into the world, into the world after certain kind of research. With this kind of understanding, then the struggle must be there to connect and the academic institutions. The academic institutions must become patrons to the cultural communities and cultural forms. That's the ambition here. Not because you, are, you have some kind of condescending attitude towards these, but your humanities will not be sustained if you are not responding to and reflecting on these cultural forms. It is for your own survival, our own survival, and a meaningful survival, we need to reorient the study of humanities. That is absolutely necessary. Okay? And this is happening, this can happen because our classrooms are filled with jatis and janjatis. And each of these janjatis has a culture and has a repertoire of cultural forms. So the question remains, is what do you do with what you have? If you realize that you have a language, if you realize that you come from a community which has this extraordinary cultural form, repertoire of cultural forms, what is it that you do with what you have? That question cannot be answered definitively and finally by anybody. Because cultures and communities continue to sustain themselves and proliferate. That has been the logic of jatis. Jatis have sustained themselves and proliferated across the world. Okay? So, what do you do with what you have? I'll stop here and thank you for this opportunity.